just to give you some idea what today's video is going to be like just to give you a bit of perspective this is a huge pile of virtual machines that i'm slowly opening here on screen in front of you just to give you some idea about the powerhouse of a NAS that we're going to be talking about today. I'm just opening them all up. I think that's all of them. That's all of these Windows virtual machines, all of them running there in the background. They've all got their own individual logins. They're all running in, and we will be going through multiple VMs simultaneously within the course of this video. Uh, but what's really intriguing, if we uh, minimize that there, is just how much system resources we're using while doing it. As you can see there, here is our CPU and memory resource usage here. We're using 23% of the available resources, which again is mental. We're seeing there the memory utilization is obviously getting higher, but right there, look at our utilization overall when it comes to the CPU. We're not, you know, we're not, we haven't even hit 50%. Oh, I tell a lie, we hit 50% at that moment about one and a half minutes ago when I opened up every single VM in the world at once. And that's just the thing. This is going to be a video today about exploring the system capabilities here. We are not going to be focusing too much on performance because we know U2s are fast. We know this system with 25 GBUs are fast. We're using the XSMP E3s that I'll talk about later on. And I do not have the test rig off camera here to really benchmark this system to its highest capability, something I'll explain later on and also why the screen is in the weird shape that it is. But for now, let's roll the credits and crack on with today's video. Hello and welcome back and that is right today we are looking at quite a powerful little NAS today we are looking at this the TSH 1290 FX a 12 bay U.2 powered flash server from QNAP we've got this device populated with these these are Exascend SSDs part of the PE3 series and these SSDs we've got the device populated with a bunch of 960 gigabyte uh, SSDs there inside now a few disclaimers straight off the bat first and foremost I am well aware that the screen is a little blurry in a slightly out of size measurement this has been one of the most complex videos in terms of presentation that I've ever had to conduct first and foremost the idea that the network connection we're utilizing in this video are these we're using 25 gbe connections uh, so that means not 2.5 gigabit ethernet but 25 gigabit ethernet there and we're utilizing that we're utilizing a modified switch we're also utilizing a window system here that's got a couple of melanex connections inside each of which are two, uh, 25 gbe and that is what we need to do in order to conduct tests with this system. Another disclaimer, again, the reason for the shape and the screen and the slight blurriness there is because we're going to be looking a lot at virtual machines later on. And as we flick between the different resolutions, it becomes very, very difficult. So I've done a forced um, 12, um, 1200 resolution there in order to make sure that we don't lose any um as we flick between the different vms you'll see what i mean later on in the video as we flick between the different resolutions between them the same goes for an ubuntu vm that we've got running here as well in the background uh, and the last thing i'll mention there is in terms of performance testing because my test machine that the one i'm using here we open it up uh, at this sixth core 11th gen here uh, this uh, uh, machine I'm utilizing for this, and I keep looking off screen because I'm using a capture card here on this screen, so occasionally I will look over there. Um, I wasn't able to achieve the real speeds that this system and these SSDs can achieve. And if you want to see a real depiction of this system being utilized to its fullest extent, I strongly recommend heading over to QNAP's own channel over in uh, the QNAP UK YouTube channel where they have done extensive testing uh, with SSDs on this very system and although the system itself was able internally to give me a lot of the performance that i wanted to see indeed when i did benchmarks on each of these individual discs i was able to get 3000 megabytes per second out of each of them it was when i was trying to output that performance externally that my test machine just wasn't able to kind of take that performance as fast as it was being fired out by the machine so once again if you want to see a total bandwidth test QNAP UK's YouTube channel, uh, there's a guy there, Craig Reed, we talked to him about before on the channel, uh, in a good way, don't worry, he's done a full performance benchmark on these, 
with a lot of lag and some really expensive uh, benchmarking kit there in the background just to keep that going a lot of stuff with um, iperf and direct connectivity as well so i recommend checking it out but the purpose of today's video is twofold one i want to give you some idea about the extent to what you can do in a NAS server using flash storage to this kind of degree. Now, the XSN PE3s that we're utilizing here, it's worth highlighting, and again, I will keep looking to this screen here. Although they do highlight that high performance there on their own measurements, it's worth bearing in mind that the ones that we're using now are optimized for read over write and once you zoom down you can see that the ssd we're utilizing although they have a sequential read speed of 3100 their sequential write is 1000 and again i will highlight later on why that is a determining factor but they do have much faster ssds currently being added to their catalog and available now in that series but on the flash server here we've got all of these ssds in here now you may notice there's a couple of differences here along the way first and foremost you may notice that although all of these seem to be listed as nvme OneDrive is listed as sata that is because i'm running the os for this system on a single SATA SSD. I wanted to make sure that the system operations did not impact any of the communication we had with the larger flash storage arrays. You can see there with that performance difference of 537 versus over 3.5 gigabytes, so 3000 megabytes being achieved there in sequential performance on those. And again, we can do a live test of performance there on that drive there. So the drive that we just added there, we can just run a nice sequential read performance test there. And while we do everything else in our video, we can allow that drive to be tested there in the background. It shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. Now, in the meantime, I have created some nice storage arrays for us. You can see here, all of these lovely drives all ready together. Again, I apologize for the slightly blurry picture quality there. It's because I've had to run via an external capture and change a lot of the resolution there to stop it being fundamentally stretched out. But as you can see there, we've got all of those drives and we've got three different storage areas there. Now, those three different storage areas, it's very important to look into them. One, we've got a pool that's created there. That is one of the SSDs. That is the single SSD that we're currently benchmarking there. I've created in its own independent pool. Then we have the rated pool of 10 of the u2 drives all together in that single array and we have enabled some of the features of zfs that are included in this system so for example within this we can go ahead and find out how much data has been saved via compression via the data reduction there this is all being done by the qnap system there with zfs you can find out more about the size in terms of percentage and actual gigabytes and terabytes sometimes with statistical information about how and where that data has been saved thanks to inline compression i've not enabled inline to duplication but that is an option you can do if you're going to be running lots of say vms there that use the same systems but i've also created there an iSCSI target there and if we make our way back into the storage area let's find our storage we can see that i have created both a nice lun via the 25 gigabit ethernet connections and i've created uh, sorry a target there and a lun of a large chunk of storage there for us to be getting on with now what i've also done in the background is i've already ran some tests in advance so if we make our way down to the bottom of the screen we can see that i did run a couple of tests there utilizing the u2 drives and I did one test utilizing direct IO and the other one out. But the one I want you to focus on is this one here on the right, the one where we were able to achieve. And again, this is synthetic, so do bear that in mind. But we are able to achieve with those 25 GBE connections um, that we hit that six gigabytes per second there, external connectivity with the LUN that we created there on the 256 megabyte test there. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to another test there. So what we're going to do is cancel out this test here. We're going to rerun. Uh, let's go for a four gigabyte test file there and we're going to again click start so again we're going for a q depth of four and we're going to leave that there in the background to conduct its own test there while we go with everything else now if we make our way back into the storage area of our um, nas here we can make our way and look into that performance test and as you can see the test that we ran on that xsn pe3 um, was it achieved as expected that three uh, just a little over three gigabytes there so three thousand uh, megabytes per second getting close to three thousand one hundred there the reported maximum performance threshold so again this drive is delivering on what we've seen there uh, if we have a look at the performance threshold 
What's going to be really intriguing is coming back to this page in just a moment because you're about to see something rather intriguing. Um, because what we have here on the top of the page, and we'll refresh that page there with that Ubuntu login, because I will have to go in. If I log into the Ubuntu VM, we can see that this one here, if we make our way into some of the settings, we can see there the resources being utilized. It's got 16 cores, a virtual cores applied to it. But again, you can make your way into the application there. And as you can see, it's virtual cores there but what we're really utilizing is detailed later on um, and again that's completely accessible and it's very easy to run those but a lot of people would rather take stock if we disable that um, ubuntu vm there so we're just going to disable it and remove that from the equation we're going to make our way into a myriad of different virtual machines that we are running in windows on here so let's refresh these tabs as uh, they've been emptied out in the cache there in the background and if I bring here on this laptop the sides of the screen just a little bit in there, you're going to be able to see that all of these VMs are all running on a similar, um, I should say, uh, IP there. But of course, they're all running from the same NAS. If we bring that in there, you're able to see that they are all running on that 169 IP. So again, as we make our way along the line, we're able to get into each of these VMs and see all of them running on that IP but they're all running from that same NAS there. I'm just refreshing those tabs. Bring those all along and boom. And each one of these, I have ran their very own Atto Disk benchmark as you can see here on screen. And again, what's important to note there is that right performance there. The right performance there on the side, uh, allowing us to hit that th um, uh, three gigabytes per second on the read, but on the right there, because of the drive and the way they're being spread across the way here, we're able to see that those numbers aren't quite as high on right within these VMs. But do bear in mind that we are still looking at multiple virtual machines all running from the same NAS all at once. If we open up the VM software, you're able to see all of those VMs running side by side all at once all sharing a lot of those resources simultaneously. So what we can do within these VMs very, very quickly, if we remove the Ubuntu there, is we can go ahead and maybe run all of these tests all over again and have a little look how they're all going to perform. So we can go in and again, once again, we're going to run all of these tests all the way along the line and all of them are now going to be running those tests simultaneously. That's really, really important while we leave that to do its thing in the background. Uh, from there, we're going to get rid of the Ubuntu connection. And again, that's really the performance we're talking about on these drives in this system. The fact that you can run all of those virtual machines, and now all of those virtual machines are all chomping at the bit with regards to how much of the system resources are being utilized. And if we go in to the system resources of this NAS, we can make our way in and take a look at the resource center. We're able to see there that the utilization, although, you know, spiking in places, is still pretty darn good and obviously if we go into the storage resource manager we are going to see a lot more of that storage allocation being utilized there you can see a lot of that performance there at the bottom getting kicked through all the time in the pool activity you're able to see exactly where these vms are living and where they're doing their job now as we wait for a lot of those atto benchmark tests to complete on this local machine that we're utilizing here what we can do is also head into AJA and run some very very quick localized tests these are going to be tests running on this local windows machine so not via the vm so these here as you can see we're utilizing the iSCSI connection there these are going to be continuous tests and we'll go ahead with a one gigabyte test file at 1080p so if we click that there we can see that we're already getting a lovely fast fluid connection right now because we're not sharing the network connectivity outside of the system we did see a drop there as we oversaturated the ssds which is something you should expect really when you're utilizing this kind of file depth here but what we can do now is come out of there and now make our way into a four gig test file and again we are utilizing that iSCSI target there over the network and again just a quick reminder that iSCSI there that we are utilizing there is a thin LUN and we're giving it a decent amount of storage as well so if we head back in we're able to see that the right performance because of the drives having that lower right point even though we're writing to multiple drives at once that is where we're going to see that drop all the way through and the larger the file size 
the more eventual that drop's going to be. Whereas if we went for a smaller file size there and we went to something pretty tiny like a 256, we're going to get that continuous speed there. These are drives that are going to have a great little IOPS there. And although we will see the drop periodically, we're not going to see it in the same direction there. But what if we go right the way to the top tier? We're going to go 16 gig. This is a big old test file here. And we can use that connectivity running along all the way going in. And as you can see, that write performance as the way it's being shared across the system there. And a lot of that, again, is to do with my local machine, not this machine, because this is where the bottleneck of my local machine was coming in. And ultimately, why it was going to become very, very difficult for me to show you the test in a visual way outside of iPerf, um, you know, that demonstrate the performance threshold here. But again, as you can see, with the oversaturation of my local machine, it makes it very, very difficult to show you there. Now, if we had back to those atto performance tests that we did locally earlier on we can see that the local test that we've got there there is on the right hand side the original 256 megabyte file test there and here on the left hand side of the screen we have got that four gigabyte test file and once again the read is where it is particularly good but it has to be bared in mind once again while we're doing this that because of my local system and because these drives have a 1000 uh, megs uh, right performance there even if we do rate them there are conflicts there why my performance figures are not going to be as high as other people out there with more uh, higher end uh, bench test systems and i would have to spend another five to six grand to upgrade my test system for the sake of this now which for the sake of one video would be a negative economy i'm sure you'd agree now, while we're doing this, I thought it would be interesting to utilize that standalone SSD we create, uh, we added earlier on, that U2 Trans MPE3, and create ourselves a very separate LUN that utilizes just that one disk there. So if we go ahead and create our new uh, LUN, we're going to give it its own dedicated new target as well. So we're going to make sure not to overcomplicate things that we're going with there. This is going to be test two. And again, from there, we're not going to use authentication. We're just going to go ahead and create our brand new target. And from there, we're going to create our brand new LUN. So this is going to be single LUN. Give that one there. And again, we're going to utilize the new standalone drives that I've added earlier on. And uh, we're going to set that to full pull capacity, I think. Let's set it up to the very largest that we can. So again, we're not going to be able to utilize many of the set the settings there in the background for that LUN for other things. Um, and then from there, we're not going to enable compression. We're going to let this be just a native standalone drive. And from there, actually, before we do that, we're going to set this up as a database small file access. So we're now going to create that new LUN there. And from there, uh, as soon as that's ready, I'm going to make my way in. It says that it's ready. So from there on my local PC, we're going to go into the iSCSI, um, spell it correctly, shall we? Uh, the iSCSI initiator and add our new drive. So again, we can go ahead and um, add our uh, new portal. So again, we're going to be able to add 102.135.7.117. Add that in. This should add our new SCSI, port, uh, new SCSI target there onto the list of original ones. So again, we're going to give that a moment, but I'm getting the impression that we're going to have to give it a moment because of the busyness of the network right now. It's now added that target, so we can make our way back into the targets. And as you can see, our new one has been added, test two, so we can connect there. And again, it will add this to our available list of drives. From there, we'll just head our way in, go into the nice, quick, easy way of doing the storage manager there. Again, I could use the Windows option, I know, but by doing that in the way this screen is laid out, it would be everywhere. So again, I'm going to go into storage, find our new drive, add our new drive. So as we can see there, disk three, obviously we don't use a master boot. As you can see, it's added our new drive there at the bottom. Let's create a new simplified volume, go for full capacity. From there, we're going to give this one the title of U. And again, we've got our new U2 drive there added. And what we can do now is head into, at the bottom, the performance tests uh, of AJA and have a little look how AJA is going to load this drive up. Just had to wait a moment for AJA to finally load up and show the drive. I had to run it as an administrator very quickly. But as we go in, we can go in for, once again, 
we can oh we have to go admin again i hate the computers that i use uh, we go in run as an admin as you can see there there is our u drive and again we're running the same settings continuous no disk cache etc and we can run that test there with a one gig so as you can see unlike when we were running all the discs together we're seeing that performance slightly different there we're getting that good right that 1000 there but the read has been somewhat parried down and so it's having that kind of conglomerate attitude to a lot of that storage there so again maybe with the larger file types we'll be able to get something a little bit more promising but this is kind of what i mean about the difference between using individual drives and bulk drives and particularly when you're running a system like this one this is going to have that bottleneck of cpu and memory rather than using a high for in system there and trying to keep it visual for you guys but uh, let's head back into those vms i presume those vms are finished yes they have and as you can see once again we're getting that two and a half close to three gigabytes of storage there and again that was all of those vms running simultaneously with atto there all the way along so again very solid numbers there being shared across the whole system across those different vms all at once and again if we make our way into uh, the resource monitor there on screen and i'll stop looking at both screens like crazy we're able to see with the system resources that yes things were busy when we we're running all of those tests on the cpu but we never got even close to 100 percent utilization which for me is one of the main reasons why this is a powerhouse of a system there uh, running all the way along and again just looking at those statistics yes storage resources no doubt are the things that have been really been working hard throughout this but it is a very powerful system to do stuff like this and with that amount of horsepower underneath and particularly when you're using u2 enterprise drives again xsend as good as these drives are in terms of write uh, in terms of read they do have much more uh, more powerful write performance drives there it's some really good numbers we're seeing by this system and more importantly the fact that it's not breaking a sweat while running all of these vms remember these vms are running dual core windows 10 uh, pros there each with three gig of memory and the system was still just going what else have you got and bear in mind again that the system's running with those 25 gigabit ethernet ports by default and you can add more on the pcie gen 3 slots it's hugely upgradable now again just to give you another idea if you are a virtual machine user that's planning to utilize this system in a more enterprise fashion if we go ahead and shut down every one of these vms one by one uh, let's close them down anyway we're not going to do any of the saving of this stuff and hopefully a lot of this will be detailed below uh, we're not going to we don't want updates we just want to shut down do you know what we're just because we're not going to keep these vms what we're going to do quite simply is go ahead and kill them all we're going to force close all of them i don't recommend doing this but what we're going to do is just one by one force close these to show you something else that this kind of powerhouse uh, ability at your fingerprints uh, your fingertips can give you so if we shut that down gives them all a moment to shut down all appropriately now they're shut down what we can do is make our way in and just start cloning them so we can go ahead create ourselves a new folder just select any old folder again we're going to call this one clone test so we're just going to keep doing that and again we're going to create ourselves a clone of that vm hell let's make another clone very very quickly and we're just going to start sticking these clones inside one by one so we're boom we're creating another clone we'll create another clone very quickly create another clone this is as you can see we've already been bench testing a lot of this cloning stick that in there clone it in there just for the hell we're just picking arbitrary things do not do it like this at home and again, this is how fast this system is in order to get stuff like this done. When you need to create cloned VMs, oh, you can see we've reached the limitations of how many we can do at once. But right now, the system is cloning and it's already 71% finished in cloning one of those VMs there in the background. And bear in mind that anytime you can go to the VM marketplace and download more VMs, or you can go ahead and go into the Windows Creator and download a VM directly if you want to test them, all of which can be done there in the background at all times. So we'll just go ahead and slam in another VM just for the sheer hell of it. And there you go. We're now downloading a brand new VM there in the background. And our first VM clone is nearly complete. So while we're doing this, we're now adding more clones of virtual machines to this system at all times. 
And again, we can run all of these on this available hardware. The only limitation at this point is going to be memory. And remember, we still had the option of running Ubuntu as well. So if we run that Ubuntu VM for the sheer hell of it, let's see if we're even gonna have the resources to do this. All of this running from the same NAS, remember this. And as you can hear that beep there, in terms of the temperature that we're hitting while we're hitting a lot of this storage very very hard the system is clearly warning us about a lot of that happening right now so again the vms we've got that last one we're just going to start running vms with wild abandon as you can see there we're running uh, linux ubuntu there i'm not sure if we'll have enough resources in terms of memory to do this but to hell with it let's find out and just start running our vms like crazy we're not going to do much with them we're just going to get to their respective login screens and just one by one run ourselves some virtual machines until the machine tells us that you can't do it anymore there you go we've run out of memory we knew we were going to if we maybe kill that ubuntu vm there uh, maybe that will allow us to free up some of the vms uh, to allow that memory on the windows side no unfortunately not we'd have to go into the settings but still we're able to run and create very quickly a lot of clones we can scale back on these so perhaps run in and edit some of these there's a lot of capabilities open to you on this system in terms of virtual machine utilization and again you can have it so that these are on time managed um boots as you can see there vm requirements we've only got one gig of free allocated memory to the virtual machine available and again you can do a lot more you can over memory commit you can go ahead and do more there's lots of things you can do within this software to really make the most out of virtual machines running on this and if you are running a flash server like this and you want some super fast responsive vms again remember super fast ssds this is where you're going to find it and i'm going to wrap things up there because i think right now i think i've kind of shown off as much as i can really hit the performance on this for those of you in the comments that are going to put down do a plex media server test on this you must be joking of course i'm not going to do a plex media server test that would be crazy wink um, but apart from that this has been a little bench test there and we've got some other testing that i've already backed up and done plenty of capture for in the background that i've run in the background of a lot of the testing i've done on this system already with a lot of that i'm going to comprise into smaller videos as well as a dedicated video on the exos and ssds and uh, before you buy on u2 ssds given that flash particularly pcie gen 3 and 4 ssds are now becoming more affordable that a lot of users are seeing youtubers actually start to be a viable option of being able to take advantage of the capacity once associated with sata ssds but the performance associated with nvmes so do stay tuned for that but otherwise thank you so much for queuing up an xsn for sending all this equipment i don't think i've got it for much longer and i'm going to try and get as much stock out of this as possible but other than that thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time.